All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what could potentially become our next tropical storm in the Atlantic. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends family, and social media. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that this one will become our next tropical storm or do you think that this one isn't going to happen? Let me know in the comments down below and let me know why and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and we're looking at the Pacific Ocean first and the reason why is because this is what will become our Atlantic tropical storm potentially. It's going to start in the Pacific and end up in the Atlantic. This isn't unheard of, but it isn't very common. So it is a really cool thing that we're going to get to watch here if this does end up transferring from the Pacific to the Atlantic. Now, here was a couple of runs ago on the GFS. This was actually from May 26th, which was two days ago from the time I'm making this video. And that dark green circle is where our tropical disturbance is there in the Pacific. Now, you can see that it eventually transfers over the Yucatan Peninsula there, uh, and it's pretty much located over it, and then eventually it makes its way into the Gulf from that. Uh, now what would be better is if it kind of takes one of the tracks next to the Yucatan Peninsula, because then it's going to cross over less land, which is going to give it more time to redevelop. Here's today's run though, and this is interesting. You can see it has two separate systems. It doesn't cross over the Pacific actually. That one probably does help it kind of get its rotation together, the one in the Pacific, but we still see our Pacific system there and we see an Atlantic system form well south of where that first one developed on the 26th model run. So on the 27th or the 28th model run, we see this one develop much further south. Uh, so we're about to move on. We're going to take a look at some climatology. What the June systems usually end up looking like? And we're going to take a look at where this one could head. And then we're going to get into all sorts of model guidance and fun stuff like that. So here was what a typical June system track would look like. And what I find interesting about this is they all pretty much, uh, head northward into the Gulf and kind of usually impact the United States. So we are going to be looking at a potential, or if we do see a system develop, we're going to see a likely U.S. impact, no matter what the strength is. Uh, it's really hard to determine the track at this point, so most of this video is going to be about the fact that there is actually a storm on the models, less about where it shows them going. Although I will show you where it shows them going. Just for looking back sake, we're going to be able to look back at this and see where the models were showing it go, just so we can see the accuracy far out on the models. Here's our La Nina, by the way, because we're about to look at sea surface temperatures, so I figured we would talk about this a little more. Look at how far down that graph has gone. It's 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 kind of dove down even further uh, than what we've saw before, so we are seeing this one develop even further, and this is only going to enhance the tropical season. Um, here's that look as we look at the sea surface temperatures. Very deep blue. Looks like a moderate La Nina already, and it's only getting stronger. Uh, but what I really wanted to talk about was the Gulf temperatures here. They're well above normal there in those yellows and oranges and reds. And that's why this one would develop so easily. Also, we're not going to have a lot of shear or obviously dry air in this region. So it's going to be able to develop quite uh, strong, I think. So we're going to have to take a look at that and just watch that as it develops. All right, now we're about to move on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our European Ensemble model probabilities of tropical depression or tropical storm. I've used this in my videos before. We're going to take a look at it again because this gave us a really good successful forecast during tropical storm Bertha. So we're going to take a look at it here uh, in this video as well. All right, and here we go. We're taking a look at the tropical depression probabilities. And now what you need to keep in mind is this is a ensemble model, which means it's many, many different members of a model. And then it's taking the mean average of all of those. That's why it shows the highest chance of probability inside of Mexico. That's not going to be the case. Uh, it's very unlikely that we're going to see the most development occur inland. Uh, likely what this model is getting complicated is it's trying to figure out if it's going to develop mostly in the Pacific or the Atlantic, and it's taking the middle of the two there. Uh, but what's important to note here is that it does have a lot of those color shades in the Atlantic, in the Gulf of Mexico there, uh, with more than a 70 or 80% chance of development there in those orange colors there in the Southern Gulf there, also for the Pacific. Uh, now, tropical storm probabilities is much lower, but about 40 to 50% in those kind of turquoise colors. And you can see, again, that's split kind of down the middle there as well. All right, now we're about to do something very cool. We're about to move on, and we're going to take a look at our European model and where it tracks this one. Then we're also going to do the same thing with the Canadian model and the GFS model. So we're going to see where all three major 
uh, models take it going, and we're going to take a look at what they have to say. All right, so here we go. We're taking a look at the, this is MSLP, normalized anomalies. Basically, this is just how low the pressure is. We can see where the low pressure system is in the Pacific. And this is by June 5th. So already in about a week from now, this one already hasn't transferred into the Atlantic at all uh, on the European model. Uh, but by the time we're looking at June 7th, look at that. It transfers all the way from the Pacific there to north of the Yucatan Peninsula, heading straight for the United States. And there is a pretty decent area of low pressure there. So this model is going to get the thumbs up for a tropical uh, disturbance possibly happening for the Gulf of Mexico. So the European model is on board uh, to some degree. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our Canadian model here. We can see our system is located there south of Central America in the Pacific still where a lot of those deep reds, but it does have a wave kind of heading into the Atlantic. Uh, and this model is also on board. As you can see, it eventually transfers by June 2nd, so much, much earlier on has it transferred to where it's just east of the Yucatan Peninsula there. Uh, what's interesting to note is that the European model has it kind of tracking to the west of the Yucatan Peninsula and then eventually to the north of it. The Canadian model has it tracking to the east. That easterly one is going to be more favorable for development because it's just going to get in the warm Atlantic waters faster. Uh, and eventually, you can see the Canadian model actually has this one hitting the west coast of Florida there. Uh, obviously, that doesn't really matter because it's 240 hours out, but I find it very interesting that this one does have a United States impact. The European model doesn't go out far enough to see where it would have this one impact, otherwise I would have shown it. Uh, but this is what the Canadian model has to say about the potential United States impact. Now let's go with the GFS model, and again, you know what this one does kind of in the beginning already. Chose a Pacific system, this is June 2nd, so again, this one's kind of already more on board with the European model's option. Uh, but by the time we're at June 6th, it completely disagrees. It has a system developing offshore of Central America there. And then by the time we're 312 out, or 18 hours out, which is going to be June 10th. So the timing is very different here. But what all three of the models show is a system developing to some degree at some point in the earlier portion of June. Has it hitting Cuba as a very strong cyclone there. Uh, and then eventually... It kind of curves around the west coast of Florida, almost has an impact, and it heads straight for the coast of Texas, which is very interesting. But all three models have a system heading into the Gulf that uh, of varying degrees and has it hitting different areas. But what we know is all three of our major, major models at this point, even though they're on different dates, have the same system developing and they have it heading towards some region of the United States Gulf Coast. That's the important part here. It's too early to determine which one is right or where it's headed, but that's what the models are showing. All right, so we're about to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our official direct weather forecast for this one, and then we're going to get into our comment of the day. All right, so we're taking a look at our official direct weather forecast here. And as you can see, we have question marks on the screen. We know there will be a low pressure system that sets up in the Pacific. And I'm very excited to track this one, by the way. You can join our Weather Freaks Facebook group or follow me on Twitter for more content about this storm. That's going to be in the pinned comment down below because I'm going to be talking a lot about this in both of those. Uh, but we're going to have this low pressure system develop. And the odds, according to all of our major models and our ensemble European model, is that we're going to eventually see low pressure transfer or completely move over Mexico or Central America into the Gulf. Uh, and it could be east of the Yucatan Peninsula or west. So that's why I just have question marks and I didn't even try to make a cone because this one can very early on go in two completely different directions. Uh, and obviously there's a huge variation in the timing here. It's a huge question mark at this point, but this is a very popular a topic right now. A lot of you wanted to know about this, so I'm making this video of my current thoughts, and my current thoughts are that we are going to have a system in the Pacific up against the Central America coast or possibly even Mexico, uh, and it's very likely at this point that we see some sort of low-pressure system either transfer or completely move into the Atlantic uh, in the Gulf and then eventually pose a threat to the Gulf Coast of America. Now, what's interesting to note is I've seen the models trend as far east as showing this one go east of Florida and possibly impact the east coast. So there is no limits to where this one could head. But as we saw on our June uh, tropical 
likelihood map or whatever you want to call that, it, nine times out of 10, these systems like to hit the Gulf Coast during the month of June. So it's going to be very interesting to see if the climatology is right here or if we see one trend with where these tropical systems have been going and actually impact the East Coast. So I'm going to need to make a lot of update videos for this one, as you can tell. Uh, and I'm very excited to do so. This is a very exciting topic because it's a very unusual storm. So I'm very excited to talk about this one. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next tropical system will be? Because obviously we had tropical storm Bertha yesterday and Jaden Farland said, or J Jaden Farland said, looks like we'll have our next tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico in early June. And that one got 27 likes, eight replies. Uh, and I'm one of those likes because definitely, as you can tell by this video, it definitely seems like that's going to be the case. Uh, so good comment there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.